Yeah. There you go. All right. Thank you so much for chatting to us today. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. So, I have had a chance to sit down and take a listen to the album, mate, and I've got to say congratulations. It is an absolutely fantastic album. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, we're really proud of it. Uh, worked really hard on it. You know, we've been sitting on it since uh, October of last year, you know, so it's really nice to have it start getting out. Yeah, and this is the ninth album, but how do you feel when you've got an album coming out these days? Do you... Do you get really nervous about the album coming out, or is it more of an excitement that you finally get to release that music out there to your fans? I think it's both. You know, you're um, you're a little nervous because uh, you know you believe in it and your team believes in it, but ultimately, the ultimate test is is the public going to feel the same way you do about this record? And you know, we thought it was an incredible record, like probably one of our best Buck Cherry records, not just because we're just releasing it. So, um, yeah, to have the response just to the first single so hot was, uh, it's, it's so, it's so nice, you know? Yeah. What makes you feel that it's the, that it's one of your better albums? Like, is there something about this album that really stands out to you and, and that you think that the fans are going to love? It's just really well done. I mean, every song is really good. Um, there's no filler. Um, you know, it's it's a classic BC record. You know, I just feel like um, the sequence, the songs, the tempos, the subject matter, it all it's all working. The melodies, the production, you know, it just all happened. You know, the performances by the band, it, it's great. This album would have been written and also uh, recorded during some very crazy times worldwide. Um, what kind of things were influencing you when you sat down to, to write this album in particular? I mean, you know, it was a hostile environment in the United States while yeah. we were writing this. We had our political situation was out of control. Our, you know, then we had COVID and then we had gun violence and racism it was a lot of hostility a lot of negativity so to be able to channel all of our energy into making the best songs that we could make you know all we all we were thinking about what's what's the climate going to be when we release this record which won't be till 2021 you know and at that point we knew that people were going to want to have a good time going to want to get out and shed their skin you know their COVID skin and have a have a blast you know so we really made a record for that period of time yeah we've seen an influx of music come out in australia post COVID now with um because so many people were writing during that time but when you talk to the bands you you learn that they had to change the way that they recorded the album because of restrictions and things like that did you guys have to change anything with the way that you would normally put together an album no you know we just we just followed safety protocol and we did our our thing we know we flew to nashville we wrote songs we flew back home and we flew back to nashville and we just wore masks and you know we're you know got tested before we went into the studio got tested before we came home and uh just it was actually like the safest time to fly because nobody was flying you know yep yep so uh <laughs> yeah yeah we didn't miss a beat yeah, and the political environment and everything that was happening in the States, how did you feel during that time? Because we were watching it here in Australia and we were seeing cities that we've grown up watching on TV and in movies suddenly having riots and things on fire. What was it like for you guys that was actually there, though? Like, it must have been a bit of a terrifying time. It wasn't really that terrifying. You know, I'm a, I'm a native California, born and raised, so... Uh, I was in. I was living in Hollywood during the uh, Rodney King uh, riots, and you, you know, um, I don't know. I didn't think much of it. I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news for a few years now. I, I just stopped watching the news. It wasn't. It wasn't healthy for me. I didn't. I didn't like what it was doing to me or my mind. Or so I stopped watching it. And you should. You should do it. You should like not watch the news for a month and see how you feel. You know. Um, so I just, I never, I've never been interested in politics either. So, um, 
I just didn't pay attention to any of that. I, I focused on uh, learning new things and um, and songwriting, you know, so that's what I did. Yeah, there's been such a swing towards that here in Australia as well. I'm, I don't watch television news anymore. I, I work at a radio station, so I hear the news that comes across on our broadcast, but I don't watch television news anymore. And there's been such a huge swing against the television news here in Australia that their numbers are, have dropped completely. Do you think that's something that we're going to see worldwide from now on? People like you and I turning away from watching the news? I don't know. I think everybody's got their filters, you know, whatever that may be. I think everybody pays attention to their interests. That's what I'm finding out, you know, and and um, you can set up filters for your own life on what you want to let into your mind. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, I just think it got so toxic that probably a lot of people uh, couldn't watch it anymore and they needed to. Uh, focus on other things that's probably what you're talking about but um yeah man you, you got to be full on on what you allow yourself to pay attention to you know what i mean and and at least i do because i i know it it affects me uh affects my physical well-being you know so yeah i have to be careful about that and and you know that that's what i do Definitely. Yep. No, nah, same. It was affecting, it was affecting my mental health. So I was like, that's it. I'm not going to, uh, to watch it anymore. Um, for you though, songwriting, is that a great release? Like you mentioned before that you were able to, to sit down and, and write and let some of that stuff out. Do you find that a great release for you being able to, to write music? Yeah. You know, uh, I like to read, you know, I read a lot of books because, songwriting is storytelling it's the same thing it's just little short stories actually you know feelings and emotions and you know i i love to read because um i like to see how people are putting things that you know painting pictures with words you know so uh, that's what i do that's what i've been doing since i started this whole thing you know yeah so so yeah that that really enhances my lyric writing and i also get attention to you know, the lives around me and every, and, you know, I get to, I get to really speak to a lot of people worldwide. You know, I get to hear all kinds of stories of all kinds of people's journeys, you know, so I incorporate that all into song. I keep, I keep a lot of notes in my phone, you know, I, I, I accumulate titles and sayings and, pieces and, and, uh, I go back to that when I'm, when I get a piece of music to write to and sometimes I'll take something from it and it'll spark something and then I'll just be off to the races. Awesome. Awesome. So this time around you guys had worked with Marty Fredrickson on the album. Of course he worked with you back with, uh, black butterfly, I think. Um, why did you bring Marty back on board and what does he like to work with? I mean, we worked with them before black butterfly. We co-wrote sorry together and, um, you know, then Black Butterfly, then he, he co-produced uh, All Night Long and Confessions, and and he's been in the fold a long time, you know, and we hadn't seen him for a while. It was so nice to, to reunite with him, and really talented guy, you know, he he's a, a talented songwriter and a great producer as well, and most of all, he just really understands Buck Cherry, why, why it works, and that's not a lot of people, so... Um, you know, knowing that, it, it becomes a lot of fun writing songs together, you know. So when we get in the room, we're really inspired, and we also want to bring our A game. So, you know, Stevie and I, right at the end, Stevie and I had written written 22 songs prior to going to Nashville, and then we did a songwriting session with Marty, and we wrote six songs in five days. Five of those songs made the record. That's how incredible it was. Wow. So tell us a little bit about those writing sessions. Like when you and Steve met with um, Marty, do you guys actually get into a room physically and, and sit down and write? How do those sessions actually work? Because I'm sure a lot of your fans would, would love to hear how that actually plays out. Yeah, we, we all have our departments and we set up the day like a work day, you know. So uh, I got a head start on one musical composition. So I already had lyrics and melodies. I got there. Uh, first day, get out of my hotel room, show up the studio. I told Marty I want to sing it at 11 o'clock or noon, you know. 
I get up early and um, I was ready to sing. I go, I'm ready to sing at noon. We got behind the mic. I sang, I sang down the track. We put it together. So I sang for about two and a half hours and Stevie comes in and Marty and Stevie work the whole afternoon on a new composition, musical composition without lyrics or melodies. And then by like 5 p.m., they send to me. I get it in my hotel room. I write all night till I'm done with the song, right? And then that could be 10 p.m. It could be 11 p.m. It could be earlier, depending on how quick it comes out of me, you know? Yeah. And then the next day, I wake up in the studio. I start singing for two and a half hours, finish that song. Then the same thing. You get another song that night and go again. And we did that straight for five days. It was amazing. Wow, wow. And then you ended up with like 25 or something songs before you went into the studio. How then do you narrow that down to which ones make the album? Because that it, it almost would be like choosing your favorite child, really. Yeah, well, we get in, we get Marty in the fold and Larry Mazer, our manager, you know, so, and, and our band, and, and we uh, we listen to the whole list of songs. And, and the cream, the cream rises to the top, you know. I mean, the best songs always win. Yeah. That's just really it, you know. And, and then you have to whittle that list down because there could be, like, too many mid-tempo songs on that list or too many fast songs on that list or too many hard rockers you got to kind of balance it so it's a really nice dynamic for a 10 song record and uh that's how we ultimately figure it out you know um and and it really uh, is a nice flow yeah do you miss the old b-sides because i remember one of the things for me growing up was i used to love going into a store and buying a, a cd single because you'd always get two or three songs on there as well that you'd never heard before because they were b-sides do do you think the digital age has kind of killed off the B side to an extent? Yeah, I think that's gone. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's long gone. And I, and unfortunately, I don't know how long records are going to be, a, you know, a thing, you know, uh, because it's so single orientated. You know, I don't buy full length records. I, I buy songs. You know, so um, I don't know. We'll see. You know, uh, that's why we made we wanted to make ten things that you'd want to buy individually you know and we're gonna what we're gonna do on this record is make a video for every single song on the record so that's gonna be really fun yeah has vinyl made a big comeback over there in the states as well it has here i know even our record stores like jb hi-fi stock vinyl now for most releases again is that something that's happened there in the states as well i think that there you know there's a whole vinyl uh movement going on i don't know how big it is you know i know that we sold out of our vinyl like right away and we had to we had to re-up and i think we have some vinyl still available and you can get that you can just go to buckcherry.com to check that out but uh yeah people love their vinyl you know it's it's uh it's crazy you know and it's really happening with the younger generation which is which is neat yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, my niece is like that as well. And I actually think CDs are going to make a comeback as well. I'm starting to see here that a few of the younger people uh, are starting to walk around with, <laughs> with Disksmans and stuff <laughs> like that again. So maybe the CD will come back as well. <laughs> wow, that's uh, maybe that's just like a style thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, mate, I have, to, I have to ask, what happens for you guys now? Because normally when you've got an album coming out, you'd be out on the road and going on tour. What happens now with most of the the world's borders still closed? Yeah, well, right now we hit the road. Our first show is June 1st, all in the States. You know, the United States is doing really well with, uh, you know, the vaccination and everything. So uh, that's good news. You know, we get to tour. So we got 105 shows booked so far in the United States, and we'll start up june 1st and then as soon as you guys will have us we'll come over there and then we're gonna hit australia japan and um the uk and hopefully europe you know at that point you know so probably more towards the end of the year with for you guys you know because you're not letting anybody in yeah well mate we will certainly welcome you with open arms and i know we are running out of time very very quickly with this interview so i guess to finish up what would you like to say to your aussie fans before they go out and grab this fantastic album. I just want to say uh, that we love you guys. Uh, every time we come there, we look forward to it and and always want to bring our A game. Um, 
And listen, if you haven't pre-ordered the record, go pre-order Hellbound right now at buckcherry.com or all places that you get music. Um, you won't be disappointed. It's a really great record, and it drops June 25th, so check it out. And we're going to release the actual title track song, Hellbound. We're going to release the video uh, later on this month, so look out for that. And go check out So Hot on YouTube. <clears throat> the So Hot video on YouTube, if you haven't already done so. Definitely. Well, Josh, thank you so much for coming on our show today. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, and we cannot wait to see you guys play live in the not-too-distant future as well. Excellent, man. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. mate. I'll let you go. Stay safe. We'll talk soon. Excellent. See you, mate. Bye.